years ago, when Horatio was there. As the ship nears Tide Reef, Horatio, who has been quiet, takes a deep breath and buries his nerves below his usual grin and swagger. Time to talk. Nuna is thinking about orc magic. Fueled by blood and rage, manipulating bodies dead and alive, foul even by her standards, an evil that must be fought to the last. Horatio nods, then excuses himself. Thomas has drawn lines and symbols around Tide Wreath on a map, but he can't see why orcs would come here. Did Horatio see anything useful when he was last here? Horatio answers truthfully. No, nothing. Never thought I'd come back here. The sunfish was part of the relief effort. I'll never forget what I saw that day. You were lucky not to get caught up in it. Horatio nods, muttering something about luck. Horatio spends the rest of the short journey in silence. You don't have to lie if you keep your mouth shut. Wreath, built in the fork of the Velvet River. Looks pretty good for a village that was almost razed to the ground by orcs only seven years ago. Horatio is nervous, but as soon as he notices the others looking, he puts on his usual bravado and strides across the bridge to find the village square full of goblarks trying to capture the villagers. One of the villagers in particular attracts Horatio's attention and his bravery dissolves. Horatio really doesn't want to be noticed. Let's see if he can make it to those trees before the villagers see him. Horatio nimbly scarpers into the trees and vanishes. Even the other scoundrels can't spot him in there. The woman who'd spooked Horatio turns just as he disappears. She shakes her head before shoving away the goblock trying to shackle her. Whatever Horatio was doing, it's clear the other scoundrels are going to have to step up. They cross the bridge, quickly assessing the situation. recognize the strong, like the orcs, and perhaps your scoundrel. These villagers are determined to fight, but they're no warriors. They're gonna get themselves killed. This is our village, and we've learned not to rely on others. Help if you want, but we're not going anywhere. Goblarks look at each other and seem to be disagreeing about something. Who knows what it is, but some of them ran off. Angry at being ignored, the lead Goblark shouts something unintelligible and kills its hostage. The remaining villagers are horrified. The Goblarks are done waiting. 
The battle for Tide Reef is on. Last of the Goblarks dispatched, the battle is won. But Tide Wreath's problems aren't done yet. <coughs> Come on, coward. You're safe now. And I know you recognize me. It's the woman who spooked Horatio. You haven't changed. She turns to the other scoundrels. I'm Zainab. My father ran the inn until he was slaughtered with the rest of the village. After the great Horatio Nine Lives went outside, promising to save us. And now you show up? Just as it's all happening again? The orcs have landed on the beach and sent Goblarks into the sea caves. You're going to help set things right. She suddenly chains herself to a guilty-looking Horatio, using one of the Goblarks' shackles. No more hiding for you. Wherever you go, I go. Until my home is safe. Zainab surveys the slaughter in her village. If there's enough left to save, we have to do better. You don't win my trust that easily. It's clear she doesn't know anything about the scoundrel's own predicament. But it can't be coincidence that the orcs have returned now. Maybe the orcs know something. Zainab shows you the way to the sea cave, where the orcs have returned for whatever they left behind seven years ago. It's time to go. This cave lies under the tide line, 
safe only for an hour or so each day, so it's always been off limits, especially since the orcs visited it during the raid. We tried to come down to see what the orcs were after, but we didn't find anything. We nearly drowned. No one's been here since. Wait. Those things are new? Zainab is referring to the things being collected by Goblarks. Weird, yellow, spherical objects that remind Horatio of something. We'll have to get closer to find out what they are. But you're already close enough for the Goblarks to notice you. jelly-like in nature. Your scoundrels should be able to figure out what they are, given time. Up close, the objects are translucent. They only look like eyes from a distance. Your scoundrel wants to get a good look at what's inside. Keep examining them. Your scoundrel nearly got a glimpse of what's inside. Keep poking. Your 
scoundrel nearly got a glimpse of what's inside. Keep poking. Your scoundrel nearly got a glimpse of what's inside. Keep poking. Got a glimpse of what's inside. Keep poking. Your scoundrel turns the jelly like sphere around and finally gets a good look at what's inside a one eyed serpentine beast. Horatio cries out, recognizing what they are. But there's no time to talk. These things are eggs and they are hatching. The goblarks who were collecting the eggs notice the hatchlings and, with only a glance between them, flee the cave. These things could destroy Tide Wreath. We mustn't let them run free. Zainab's priorities are clear and make sense. But the goblarks and their orc masters might get away, and they might know who's behind the scoundrel's predicament. Goblarks and Orts planning to do with those eggs? Is the one behind the scoundrel's predicament involved? With Horatio chained to her, the scoundrels aren't going anywhere. Tide Wreath was already destroyed once. I'm not leaving these things here for it to happen again. It's going to take more before she turns her back on these spawnings. Even if the Orcs are planning something worse, we still can't leave these things here. Zena is starting to doubt herself. is rising quickly. The scoundrels only have so long before they're trapped here to drown as the cave fills with water. The hatchlings don't have that problem. So if you're gonna kill them, do it quickly. All oh, right, you win. Whatever the orcs are doing, it could make them strong enough to come back and kill us all anyway. Let's go. Deciding it's best not to wait around in case Zainab has a change of heart, the scoundrels get going. Hopefully in time to interrupt whatever foul plan the orcs have for those eggs. That's them! The scoundrels will never forget what the orcs looked like since they rescued late Governor Sanko from them seven years ago. Wait! They're leaving! You have a ship, don't you? Knowing what Zainab is getting at, the scoundrels take off toward their ship. You know what those things in the cave are, don't you? Zainab asks Horatio as they ran. He nods, explaining that it's in one of the stories he used to tell. Only unlike the other stories, this one is based on the truth. Timing. 
Some orc pirates just had the gall to sail past me. Me? I was just thinking about apprehending them, but you were... Wait, who's this? Ah, exactly what I was hoping you'd say. Lose the topsails. As they chase after the orcs, Horatio continues his story. According to the legend, the Kraken, one-eyed god of the sea and storms, sired many enormous monsters called Krakenspawn, including Tiamat, the serpent. Those hatchlings were her offspring. Though small, they were still the grandchildren of a god, or so the stories say. Why would the orcs be after them? Brace yourselves! We're approaching their ship! Never thought I'd come to the legendary Fell Sea. We always suspected the orcs lived underwater, and seeing them dive down here confirms it. Peering into the water, the scoundrels can see some kind of shape below the waves. But it's impossible to tell what from up here. We can dust off my old diving helmet and belts if you like. It's from the years before I joined the Crown Navy, when I was a diver for the Alchemist Guild. Horatio is the last to don his helmet, which doesn't go unnoticed by Zainab. What's the matter? Never been underwater on one of your heroic adventures? Without waiting for an answer, she jumps overboard, taking Horatio with her. As their eyes adjust to the gloom, the scoundrels make out the enormous maw of a huge, dead, one-eyed shark. This can only be the legendary Branchia, another of Kraken's children, whose stories say died long ago. Why did the orcs need Tiamat's eggs? A goblark swims forward with one of the eggs. The orc warlock makes a savage gesture, and the goblark dies plunging into the creature's guts. With Tiamat's egg, there is a flicker of life. Well, and death, in the eye of the beast. And the purpose of all this becomes horrifyingly clear. The orcs mean to reanimate Branchia. Ritual nearly over. You die here. <laughs> you have to stop the Goblarks from delivering Tiamat's eggs into the beast's mouth. Thank <laughs> you. 
Zainab, realizing this is the orc who led the massacre on Tide Reef years ago, swims towards him. Horatio has no choice but to go with her. is halfway to Branchia's mouth. There's no time to lose. Thank <laughs> you. 
dark. However, another go block emerges from the gloom carrying an egg. They seem to have an endless supply of eggs and sacrificial go blocks. <laughs> the scoundrel's attention. Zainab's helmet and belt have been destroyed, and she's too busy fighting to hold her breath to avoid a fatal blow. She's gone.